The US dollar remains vulnerable right now. Here is everything you need to know fundamentally as to why we are currently edging to the downside. Guys, let's jump straight into this video. All right, so last week, we were keeping an eye on um, you know, labor market data from the United States. And we were in much, really when, you, oh, excuse me, and the FOMC rate decision. So if we go start off with Wednesday quickly, FOMC, as you know, they weren't as hawkish as they could have been because they ruled out hike and they're not tightening their quant, they're not conducting quantitative tightening as fast as they could have been in terms of the withdrawal of that stimulus from markets. Okay, so it's still, you know, uh, quantitative, there's still money being pumped into the markets at a, a decent pace, you know, not tighten up quickly. So that was not so hawkish from the FMC because if it was hawkish, they would have said, look, a rate hike is still possible, but Jerome Powell played that down and they would have tapered, uh, you know, their quantitative easing faster. They would have done quantitative tightening a lot quicker, but they didn't. All right. So that was one thing for the dollar. The, the now in the coffin came with, remember I said how the odds were stacked up against the dollar and it just took for slightly softer numbers. Uh, well, generally soft, slightly softer. When you look at average earnings, obviously this is disinflationary. If less, if wages are going down, that's disinflationary. Why? Because it means uh, we've got people getting paid less and they're going to be less reluctant to want to go out and spend their money, okay? So always remember that. And that's sort of the market's thinking. And the second point, non-farm payrolls, the amount of jobs being added to the economy was below 200K. Remember I said before, anything above 200K is growth. Uh, that's growth territory for the US economy if we're getting over 200,000 jobs being added each month. But we've slipped below that key number now, which again, disinflationary. If less people, if less openings, jobs being added to the economy, that's disinflationary. It means less people potentially coming into the workforce to go out and stimulate the economy and obviously inflation. And then the unemployment rate ticked higher slightly to 3.9%, albeit this is still generally good, right? Unemployment rate is uh, at below sub you know, 4% is solid, is solid. Uh, but at the end of the day, markets are still thinking in their head, you know, the, this was always going to be stacked up against us, right? In terms of the dollar upside, which we we're calling from the start of the year. This is always going to be stacked up against us in the sense of when markets want something, they're going to hang on to every single little thing that they can to try and press for their agenda in the sense of rate cuts, okay? Now, on the point of rate cuts, it's now expected after only markets were pricing in just one rate cut in 2024. Now the markets have repositioned and we're looking at two potential cuts for this year. So you can see the probabilities jumped up, uh, not so much June, July, but more so uh, the, la uh, the end of the year. OK, so after the summer, September, 67 percent chance, November, 80 percent chance and uh, December, 90 percent chance. Now, obviously, that's not to be uh, to think that we're going to get a hike in September, November, December. No. OK, um, markets are now expecting generally that we're going to get two. I just wanted to very quickly interrupt this video and introduce myself for anyone that's new here. By the way, my name is Ken Shigbo and I've been in these financial markets for well over 15 years. I actually started my career as an analyst. Right. My day to day was digesting all key fundamentals, macroeconomics, everything essentially that was influencing and putting a value and a price on the assets that we're trading. So I really got to know that. And that was, that's an invaluable amount of knowledge that I accrued over the years. And then in time, I used this knowledge and transformed into a trader. Obviously it took me many years to then learn how to actually implement this, but I've been able to do that. So why I'm doing the TFTC, the Fundamental Trading Club, is to put that value to you guys in much simplified form, because a lot of the news flow and, and websites and information out there can be seriously overwhelming, but I just strip it all out and simplify it and make it actionable for the everyday trader. Guys, obviously make sure you are within the Fundamental Trading Club, the free Discord. And obviously if you want to take your knowledge to the next level, receive trade ideas, go into a little bit more detail, have live streams, then you can check out the premium membership. And otherwise, if you want your, basically your university, if you like to macroeconomics and trading fundamentals, I do have a course which you can check out as well, which has amazing reviews. All right, let's carry on with the video. Rate cuts, okay? Obviously the end of the day of the FMC, they continue to evaluate how inflation's moving. They're still not happy with inflation right now. So really, we've got June, <clears throat> May time, June time, July time to really see if inflation can come down. Because obviously, if it doesn't, you know, th those two cuts now that the market wants will come back down to one if inflation doesn't come down. So we're going to really hawk the inflation data just out of interest. Let's see when it next is. I I I'm actually not sure when the next CPI readings are, PPI, CPIs. Uh, we're next getting those. Okay. 
next week, 15th of May, which would be interesting. So let's keep an eye on that. If those numbers remain sticky, right? We've got retail sales there on the same day as well, which again, if that is higher, that's inflation. Remember people spending money, retailers performing well, they're going to keep their prices high. So if we see this set of data next week coming in higher, that's going to reposition things, okay? We're going to see that bounce in the dollar coming back into play, All right? So let's just sort of keep that in our minds. Right now, I said at the start of the week, uh, how, uh, well, in the Sunday analysis that we are, we're still structurally to the upside, right? If we start off on a monthly, decent four months there to the upside. So our best run that we've seen since a little while, since mid-2022. Um, on a weekly here, Obviously not the best of candlesticks, but I was looking for, you know, signs that we could stage a rebound around this sort of trend line. You know, it's, you can see sort of structurally to the upside printing uh, higher highs and higher lows. Okay, so potentially around this area that we go and print a new higher high. Let's see. Um, that's, that's a possibility in play. But where calendar is pretty light this week with sort of debt dollar. This week, we're probably just going to be moving Playing still the the um, playing the card of less rate cuts. So excuse me, more rate cuts this year. Okay, we're playing that card, and the fact that as I say, there's nothing to really prop up the dollar really when you look at this week. Okay, nothing major to really prop up the dollar as such. So it's in the hands of the dollar's peers really, um, and it's in the hands of the markets if they want to continue to run with this narrative of two cuts are coming. We can see that, that that is being in play at the moment, and I'll talk about elsewhere where, where we're seeing it. But I just want to touch upon yields, okay? Remember, yields are very important for us to look at. They really give us an idea of um, where potentially, uh, what mar well, mar what markets are positioning for, right, with regards to interest rates. Remember, if yields are rising, we're anticipating higher rates. If yields are falling, we're anticipating lower rates, okay, for a respective economy. Now, what's interesting here, not to say that, obviously, uh, I, I trade yields or, or, or I trade uh, bonds, but, you know, when you look at the yield here on a technical sort of basis, we had a bit of an evening star there, as you can see, a couple of weeks ago, and that validated with that closure below last week, and obviously still some selling in play right now. And you can just see how it, you know, very much mirrors, or the dollar mirrors yields, right? Remember, dollar follows yields, okay? Depending on what yields are being offered, where interest rates are going, that that's then where the money flows, okay? Where the highest rates of return are gonna be received for a foreign investor. So yields are coming down at the moment. Yields are uh, down, what, six tenths of a percent today. This is the 10 year yield and down across the board, as you can see here. Um, dollar sitting in my, minor positive, but obviously remains vulnerable with the falling of yields, with the narrative at the moment that markets are playing for those two rate cuts as opposed to one. So the dollar sort of, the odds are stacked up against it at the moment, particularly with no major data in play to potentially prop this up and kick us back into that upside trend, okay? So it's, you know, the, vul the vulnerabilities are there uh, at present. 